Now I realize that I might have put a lot of people off with my last video, basically talking smack about living a digital nomad life. Judging from the massive response that I got on uh, being a digital nomad sucks, I felt I had to address this. I think I had maybe two people were irate. So that's a big percentage of my view. Oh, uh, this is going to be hard. Hello? There's the dog going. I'm staying at someone's house in Cabo, Mexico. I'm very grateful to be here. You might have seen me here before on uh, other channels of mine when I had this defunct podcast called the Untitled Travel Podcast or, or something like that. Uh, some... So you see this part right here. You remember this part. Oh, fuck yeah, man. Who doesn't forget a stare like that? The way that this woman <laughs> stares at Jordan is just... It's like, damn, she wanted to fucking hit you. Oh, dude, that was like her shtick. Some bullshit project I had that is no longer functioning. Anyway, my last video. I go through the, the pitfalls and the... The snags along the way of becoming a digital nomad. The dreams that we all have to live this life of sitting on the beach, blah, blah, blah. Just check out the video if uh, that's something you're looking into. But, but on this video, I I was talking to a buddy of mine. When he told me, well, I'm a digital nomad and blah, 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 I was like, no, you're, no, you're not. And I'm going, wait a minute, yeah, you are. Yeah, he's a little more sedentary. He's a little more dug in. He's a little more settled. But that doesn't mean he's not a digital nomad. He's found a place to live and he's dug himself in. He's not doing the entrepreneurial, I own a business or I drop shipping website stuff. He's married. He's got a, a good job that requires his creativity and it requires him to work and he does it every day and he does a great job. So there's all kinds of different digital nomads. The funny thing about the whole thing is, as much smack as I talked, I don't think I would have done it any other way. And I worked really hard to choose this path to, to kind of get out of the American mindset. I want to tell you how I got out of that American mindset, uh, you know, just touch on it a little bit. But before, I just kind of want to play this voice message that my friend James sent me that kind of made me start thinking, oh, wait a minute, okay, hold on, I, I've been a little unfair. Uh, but it was a very, very honest testament of your situation. So he's talking about the last video and me, I say, oh, what did you think of my video? You know, of course, I want everyone to just ogle over my released things. And things, I'm glad to hear that it's not a desperate situation. Um, uh, but, uh, I mean, you could argue I'm a digital nomad. Well, I, I guess I am, but the way I look at it is like, still gotta, still gotta put the hours in. Um, but and I, I think, honestly, that was all I was really trying to say. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on the the pluses of it, but yeah, that that's basically the pitfall is you're not it's not, you're not just gonna coast. I'm lucky now to have I can pay cheaper rent than I would in the in Europe. That's or, a point. And I, I you know I've got nicer weather and you know I'm closer lives, to sort of nicer a, things. Nice so if place. I want to take a holiday somewhere nice, then I don't have to travel fifty fucking mile, million miles to get there. So, but really, I, I mean honestly, he's my friend, but I, I wish he would lighten up on the swearing. You know, it, I'm just saying we're all trying to better our lives. You know, maybe he could, but it's fine. It's fine. I've still got to, still got to do my day job as best I can. Uh, and of course, there's an element of I can make progress a lot quicker. I can actually save money here, uh, where that was, uh, that was nigh on impossible in the in the UK. So that's my take on it. Um, Sorry, I forgot to mention he's from the UK. Sorry. I can get that like plenty of people get pretty lazy with it but I mean I came here with very little to Indonesia originally I think came here with like a couple of grand that's all and a part-time job so that means a grand is a thousand probably pounds one thousand pounds is like I don't know like fifteen thousand US dollars I knew that I had to figure something out that's not true at all by the way it's not true out. You knew okay. figure something out. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, what else? So, uh, you know, he moves on to our normal chummy things, but he's saying, you know, he, he was in this situation when he moved. Uh, he, he had a couple thousand bucks and he, he kind of said, oh shit, I've got to do something. He's married. He lives in Indonesia. He was living in Bali. He moved out of Bali because Bali got too heavy. But uh, it's James from EQLS, the infamous EQLS. Those guys, they're rascals. They're rascals. Uh, 
you know, help them out because they've they've got some they've got some good music on here. But you know, help them out a little bit. <laughs> I'm not one to talk. I mean, look, come on. I know how they feel. Debut video. Although to be fair, I have an old channel that I tried putting this video out on that I have 2,000 subs and uh, many people with their bells on. And I got just as many views, maybe seven. Let's take a look. I'm actually really curious. what I call it? Being a digital nomad blows. 12 views. Ah, it's got 12 views. So I flipped the, okay. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little experiment. Anyway, for now, stick with this channel, whatever channel you're on. Check him out. He's amazing. In fact, I, I, he, I, I said, well, I'm probably going to put music on this video. I, I said that to him. James has put a lot of music on my videos. He does a lot of uh, really unique stuff that I really like. He'll ask me what I want or he'll see the videos I'm making and then he'll make the damn music just willy nilly and send it over. In late July of 2021, when I was living in Bali, my YouTube channel revolved around investigative journalism. I haven't heard this yet. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, I'm feeling some Peter Gabriel in here. I'm feeling some. Oh man, this is going in. This is going up. You've probably been hearing the music already because it's already in the goddamn video. I'm putting it in the video. Well done, James of EQLS. Second album's coming out. Watch for it. That's not from EQLS. I'll, I'll link that stuff as well, but okay. Anyway, so, you know, he made a lot of good points of the actual good parts of being a digital nomad. I was working at Sony Pictures, Imageworks. I was working behind a desk and, and I had been working as a producer and an editor before that time for many, many years. Freelance, really bouncing around, really catching gigs, you know, three jobs, man. Finding the gig, doing the work for the gig and then getting paid. I was a pain in the ass. So I jumped into LA working from San Diego and once you, come from anywhere else into LA, you basically got to start over unless you're some amazing Darren Aronofsky, you know, you just made pie in New York or something. So I'm sitting behind this desk and it's, it's most basically a technical job. And I'm surrounded by super smart people with computer science degrees, with degrees. I mean, I didn't graduate college. I did win an Emmy though in college. So that's a big reason also why I quit because I only cared about the videos. I was only making videos. Somehow I learned how to program and got the job. Surrounded by people who are so much better than me at this stuff. They're making programs, they're making scripts, meaning not movie scripts, but scripts that are program based for, for getting tasks done because we're, we're really like a, a visual effects house. So we needed a lot of computer work done. Things. So any pictures and image works. Where is this? In Vancouver, okay, this is Vancouver. Yeah, I worked at in Culver City. They're, they, they're literally, God, it looks like my old roommate. I don't think that's a real view of the city. First it was hell, then I went back and it was heaven. That is a spiritual story that I will tell later. That is when I became aware of the self and the reality and in the essence of reality. And when I went back to Sony, it was heaven. I loved it. I mean, it was fine, it was great. Before I really, it really worked me over. I was working at Beowulf. You remember Beowulf, right? Yeah, we all remember Beowulf. Everyone watched it. I think I watched one. Anyway, I'm nervous as hell. I'm going to work for this place, this big, now big company. It's not these small production houses who are making promotional videos and, you know, salsa commercials. Mama Yama won Papa's heart with her salsa with its magical blend of spices. Today, with Mama Yama's four second salsa mixed, you can make perfect salsa anytime. Richard Crawford of One Productions, Sally Crawford of One Productions. Fantastic, thank you. Somehow I managed to learn Bash and TSH. I got high, uh, interviewed by, I think, 15 people and I and nailed it because of my editing background. And uh, here I am. And it's a bunch of disk space management. It's a bunch of queuing up processors and this giant room of computers just processing stuff. And cold. Yeah, there it is. There's my campus. Uh, yeah, I mean, Imageworks is, is part of Sony and Sony is Columbia. I mean, this is the Columbia lot, but yeah, here's my little campus. I worked on the other side of this over there. It was neat. 
So I'm behind this desk. I don't know what I'm doing. Everyone around me is super smart. And everyone else is just like, and I'm just going, eh. And, and God bless my lead, my boss of sorts, Craig, basically saying, man, you're not going to learn shit for a long time. So just relax and just learn as much as you can. But just, you're not going to be doing much. You know, we're going to be needing you when things get really hot. Of course, the first thing he said to me when I walked into the production is, I said, so how's the movie doing? How are we doing? And he says, we're fucked. Yeah, we're totally fucked. And that was my first experience after training, which is getting hit like, we're fucked. And you're walking into a, a, a landmine, a field of mines. Since we're all fucked, you're fucked too. Welcome to the show. I was taking everything much more personally, you know, like, not like, oh no, you're fucked, you're an idiot. But it's just like, we're fucked and, and you're fucked too. And uh, yeah, welcome to the fray, w good luck. We're not. We're gonna help you so so, but yeah, welcome. This is the business, and I just got really freaked out. So I'm sitting there like really nervous and really fucked up. Okay, but I'm here. I made it to Sony. I made it to Hollywood. I made. I'm in, and I can move into producer. I can move into an artist position. My resume is gonna fill out. I can move to other places, and you know, certainly in VFX houses. And I said, okay, this is it though. And I'm just terrified. And I'm sitting behind a desk, and this is it. And you know, there's a lot of downtime. We had 10 hour work days. There's a lot of downtime during that because we, we were putting fires out. I didn't know how to program, so there's not much for me to do, but learn and kind of watch people do stuff. And they gave me really simple tasks. And then there's a lot of downtime. So I started, I started doing research and I started typing in things like how much vacation time do countries have compared to the USA, right? How the US stacks up. I, you know, France and Spain are tied for second, 36 days each, and that's work days. To my knowledge, the government requires 36 working days of, of vacation. South Korea, 31 days. Japan, even Japan, I mean, back then it was a little less, but J Japan was mandating, mandating 10 days, which is two weeks, so 10 working days plus the surrounding uh, weekends. Now it looks like it's, it's risen. UK requires 28 days, that's fantastic. I mean, that's like an actual month. I understood at the time that Norway requ required two months, like altogether, two months. I was dating a Croatian woman, lovely woman in Croatia. I had not met her yet, but anyway, she was constantly going on, on vacation and she worked at a hospital. And she's a scientist at a hospital. I'm thinking, okay, how, how, how many days does the U.S. allow off? U.S. has one of the lowest required vacation days by country because, well, why? Because there's no statutory, because there's no statutory minimum requirement for what employers need to offer in terms of paid vacation days. In other words, there is no requirement for any vacation days in the United States. And this freaked me the fuck out. And it made me think, oh my God, something's wrong with the US in, in this mentality of work, work, work. And we're always going, ah, oh, they're European. Ah, oh, look at that European shorts he's wearing. Those shorts are a little too high. He must be from Europe, you know, compared to America's <laughs> fucking, fucking crisscross, you know, must be from Europe. But, you know, so we don't really uh, educate ourselves about uh, European vacation days off. And this was in 2008, 2007 at the time. So, I mean, we, I had no idea. We had no idea. Another thing about it, too, is like I realized I just have this obsession. Like I, I wanted to get some land and just live off the land. And I didn't want to have any tie in, no payments, nothing. I didn't want to pay. I just wanted to pay for the land and then Leave me alone and I'll contribute the way I want, you know, that kind of thing. I was really obsessed with these things. And I realized there was just no way you could do that. There was no way you could buy land and be done. You had to pay taxes every year. You had to pay, keep paying. And just that just all just disturbed the hell out of me. The only place you didn't have to pay was like at some dock in Seattle or something. If you had a boat. Wow, I just felt really trapped. I found this out. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Something's going on here. I'm, I'm just kind of looking at the desk and I'm looking at the position. I'm looking at these smart people who will fight for their jobs. And I'm going, this is it? Is this it? Is this it? Is this, 
am I done? This is it. And I just got super depressed. Sorry for the long winded, uh, you know, story of saying, oh, I found out America has no vacation days. And it fucked me up. I really began to put the seed in my head, aiming towards traveling, making money, and I didn't know how to do it, and my mind was completely shot of how to do it. And long story short, I did it. So I'll get into that in other videos, but I did it. And, and experiencing other cultures and seeing how people live, not only monetarily, but mentally, you know, kind of their thinking financially in their mind, like what's important for them. Vacation, uh, community, family, depending on each other. Basically being communist. <laughs> but it's not just like, okay, work, 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 work. Like I, I take a vacation as an American. It takes me 10 days to finally relax. And by the time that's done, I'm going, oh, I can kind of get used to this. I got to go back to work. So many good friends I knew would go on vacation. They're like, what am I doing here? I don't like this. I want to get back to work, you know? And honestly, that's cool. I just went through a, a month at a Zen temple and all, just now, and all I want to do is get to, back to work. So that was kind of, I understand that. To see how the rest of the world works and to see how the minds and the kind of laid backness of the other cultures are, that's important. And that, that is something we lack in America. So being a digital nomad, it does introduce a completely different side of the globe. And the side of this, this side of the globe is way bigger than America and Europe and in wealthy countries. It's way bigger. Everyone thinks Americans are just loaded with money and we are, but we have to spend it in America. They don't understand that. And so we're not loaded with money, but you bring that money over to the other country, Mexico and Thailand and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, and they get it. The locals get it. So they know how to, kind of string it out of us because everything is cheap and we go, wow, that's cheap. And it's just, they keep like giving it the, like a little little beer here, little t-shirt there. You gotta, you gotta spend a little more for, for air conditioning. You gotta da, da 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 You learn all these different things. And yeah, that's changing a little now because everyone, the secret's out. I can get things done and work in other countries for much cheaper, you know? So that, that's starting to, Airbnb screwing everything up and prices are really starting to get high and you gotta find more remote places. And, all the easy shots, no scope, you know, beautiful locations, secrets out, you know, especially things like Bali, like secrets out. Yeah, it just gives you another perspective completely. You don't have to be tied to these desks and this work life. Now we have remote working, of course, and that was just all something we're all pioneering back in like 20, 2010, 2011, when I really did leave. It was, that was like four hour work week and the lifestyle business, business lifestyle podcast, something like that. I, I wonder if he's still going. Ian, I think his name was. But I just jumped right into it. I got into some other businesses and I started, I started Amazon. And yeah, it was great. It was great. It, it, I was literally working in tables next to the pool. You know, I was living in Bali with a house of about 10 or 13 people. And it was awesome. We were surrounded by creative people and we had the breeze blowing through. I'm sure I've got some photos here. I'll put them on later. Yeah, so there are some definite, if you can keep your act together, if you can keep your shit together and you don't get lazy, yeah, it's just like any other work situation. Now the whole remote thing. I'm just saying, for me, from the last video, for me, yeah, I got complacent, that's all. If you can, even just the idea of, breaking that American mindset. That's valuable. I highly suggest travel. I highly suggest if you can live in another place and do your job, try it, try it out. You know, plenty of people from Australia would just take four, five, six months and come to Bali and work from Bali in the same time zone. You can, Americans can come to Mexico, do the same thing. There's plenty of beautiful places in Mexico. The internet's good here. Internet is important. Back in 2010, 2011, 2012, internet was a problem and now it's much better you know just get that taste outside of america so important and it just opens up avenues and what's possible and what is not absolutely required of being an american because that was lodged in my brain it was lodged in my brain and i got it out started flowing again right the mojo started pumping you get that monkey off your back and then you see different possibilities. I'm sorry to say you, you know, but you know what I mean. That's what happens when you do that. You see different possibilities. When you remove all the blockage, 
in one's mind in America. America is a great place if you play the game. Having financial stability, having a partner that su supports you, you know, if you have kids and stuff, and you can do that. You can live a nomad lifestyle with children, with with a with, with a with a pronoun partner. You can do it, and that's what I learned also by starting my own business and getting out of America. It's just like, dude, I can do these things. Like, and I did it, and everyone's going, wow. At first they're like, what are you doing? You know, and then they're like, wow. It became quite vogue, you know, to be a digital nomad. Man, you're really living the life, man. I'm like, do it, then do it. So that's kind of why I'm here. I'm here, I'm here to, sh to say, do it. Point in the last video was, yeah, you gotta do it. Point in this video is, yeah, you can do it, but you gotta do it. And that's what James's point was as well of EQLS. Check him out. For me, the, the, the solution was, I just said, how am I gonna do this? And I went like a year thinking about this, two years maybe. You know, I left Sony, I came back to Sony, had other jobs between that, you know, but the kind of the, my second tour at Sony was, how am I going, I wanna do this, make money, I wanna have time, I wanna be able to kind of go where I want. And then it all it was, that there it was, and it became much more, much more specific later once I decided, okay, what am I doing? But that was the general idea. But so all, all from there was, how do I do this? That's all it was from there. How do I do this? And I just kind of let that question rest. But it was there. The question was there and it rests. And it inspired me to get curious and to look at what people were doing and start, start hunting around. And what ended up happening was beyond my expectations. It was not what I was expecting. I moved to Japan to get more disciplined, but I said, no, no, this is not, oh, well, well, I mean, it might have been a good idea, but I didn't want to do it. And I really just started following this flow inside of me, and that's another big part of this channel, is, is finding that, that yes, finding that, that thing that goes beyond you that says, oh yeah, and there's just lots of obviousness, and there's no doubt. So that, that's where I am right now, and I just want to tell you, go for it if you want it completely fine. You can, you can edit, you can edit your programming on the beach. You can, you can do it. And I was a little harsh with the guy who didn't have the, the, the laptop plugged in, that it was bullshit. I was a little harsh. I know there's like MacBook Airs and I'm just used to editing. I'm used to having like a lot, a big, big laptop. So I always need to plug it in. So I was a little unfair. Sorry. I want to hear what the hell's going on with you guys. Cause it's inspiring. It's, it's getting me going again with what's happening. There's a lot more ins inspiration I would like to have, such as if your damn landing page isn't working and people are bouncing right off it, what do you do? What do you do? You know, if you have any advice for that, please let me know, please let me know. But anyway, Digital Nomad, not so bad. Give it a try. It takes balls. It takes a fucking hairy puss to do it, but do it, right? Just do it, right? And then shave your balls and shave your puss again afterward because you get all fancy, you wear kind of half, what are these shirts called again? It's a shirt Nathan Drake. Henley, it's a Henley. I love Nathan Drake's shirts. Yeah, I've got one of these, these are great. Oh, I'll be sure to wear it. Look at that, oh, that chest. Look at that chest, what a man. And he's not, not pretentious, he's not arrogant, and he goes on adventures. Look at that, look at the color of the, just look at that. Just look at those jeans. Look at the color of those jeans. Brown. Who wears brown jeans? Someone who doesn't give a fuck and who gets it done. Hmm. Thanks, guys. That's, uh, that's all for you. I like your moves. Shit.